Hey guys, are you excited that you can now find gluten-free Oreos in the store? My wife is super excited that there's finally a gluten-free Oreo for her. I have to say, they taste pretty close to the original. So when you use them in recipes, you can't taste any difference. Today, we're gonna make a gluten-free Oreo pudding dessert. I call this heavenly Oreo dessert because there's not a better term for it. This is a gluten-free dessert that's easy and no-bake. I'm Jamie with Savory Saver. I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your gluten-free lifestyle easier. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started, the first thing we need to do is make a crust. So we're gonna take this entire package of Oreos, cream, cookie, all of it, and into the food processor to make some crumbs. Now, if you have a better way of doing this, by all means, go ahead, throw them in that plastic bag, brush them with the rolling pin or the fry pan or whatever you need to do. I just think this is easier, so I'm gonna make a mess with this and I'll just do the dishes, it's fine. So we have all our Oreos in here and we are going to turn it on and pulse it until it's finally crushed. Okay guys, once everything's crushed, we wanna pop them in a bowl, but before we do, or actually, let's put it in the bowl first, it'll make it easier. Pour those in a medium bowl. You could probably do this in the pan if you wanted to. I'm gonna do it this way just to make sure everything mixes well for me. But we wanna save a half of a cup. And this half a cup crumbs we're gonna put over the top of the dessert before we pop it in the fridge. So we'll put that to the side. And into these crumbs, we wanna mix one stick of melted unsalted butter. So pour all that in there. I'm gonna give it a good mix until it's kind of like sand that's wet. I just find that the bowl makes it a little easier to mix because it all goes back into the bottom of the bowl and it's not spread across the entire pan that we're gonna put it in. That looks like it's mixed pretty good. So let's get it into our pan. So I've got a 13 by nine Pyrex here. You could do it in metal if you had metal. And we don't need to coat the pan with anything because it's got so much butter in it, it's not going anywhere. And then you wanna spread it around evenly. And this may be one of those things that actually works better. You can hear Oliver barking, he's at home with me today and not at camp. So you may find it's easier to spread this out using hand, your hands instead of a spoon. So use whatever works best. You want it pretty compact because it'll firm up better in the fridge and you'll get better cuts out of it. And you don't need to go up to the sides like you would a cheesecake. Just on the bottom is fine. Okay. We've got our crumbs all on the bottom. They're all packed in. So what we need to do now is, I, I like to put it in the fridge for a couple of minutes. You can probably skip this step, but for me, I find that it helps the butter start to firm up again. So we'll get a better crust. And it's only gonna be in there five or 10 minutes because we're gonna prepare the filling for this, but it's just enough time to let it start setting up. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and we will start on the filling. So now that our crust is firming up in the fridge, let's get started on our filling. This is one eight ounce package of softened cream cheese. This is just regular cream cheese. You could probably do it with the light cream cheese if you wanted to. If you need to soften it in the microwave, I would do it for 10 seconds. See how soft it is, maybe another five. That should soften it up enough to work with if you've not had time to leave it on the counter. So, Let's give it a little blend just to make sure it's softened up a little bit and then we'll add the next ingredient. Okay. 
So that does look pretty soft to me. So now I've got two 3.4 ounce boxes of instant vanilla pudding. So we're gonna add that. We're gonna add three cups of regular milk. This is 1%. You could use whole milk. You could probably use skim milk. You could use 2%, whatever you have at home. And then we're gonna use, blend in one, what is this, eight ounces? Eight ounces. One eight ounce tub of non-dairy whip, cool whip. So we're gonna put that in there. What I like to do, so I hopefully don't get pudding all over the kitchen, is I like to mix my pudding mix into the cream cheese first. So I'm gonna do that. And just a little bit, just to get the powdered in there blended some. I just find that it makes it a little easier when I start adding the milk. It may not make any difference. I don't know if it, you don't think it does, go ahead and throw everything in there at once. Your kitchen, I don't know the difference. No shame. However, you can get the job done. So I'm gonna blend it on low just for a minute, just to get everything blended. Guys, once everything's blended in there pretty well, you can bump up the speed on your mixer, but keep it on low until everything's blended or it'll get everywhere. Uh, you want it to be like pudding consistency, just like if you were making pudding without the added cream cheese. So it's gonna take probably three or four minutes to do that. All right, guys, I think our Pudding and cream cheese and milk is all mixed together. You want it as smooth as you can get it. So the softer your cream cheese is, the smoother it's gonna blend into everything. So if you have any lumps, like I actually have a little bit of lump in here, it's because the cream cheese wasn't totally room temperature because I nuked it for a couple seconds and it's just not as soft as it could be. So if that's your issue with the lumps, it'll still taste good but it'll blend better the warmer your cream cheese is at room temperature. So now we wanna add our Cool Whip. And I like to do this at the end because I like to fold it in as much as I can to keep that airiness. And you wanna fold it all in just until you don't see a lot of Cool Whip in it. So when the white streaks disappear, and all you see is a lighter yellow color, that's when you can stop. And when you fold, you wanna come down your bowl, up, over, and back down into the batter. That helps keep as much air as possible in whatever you're folding. Let's put this off to the side and grab our crust. So here's our crust, and it's firmed up pretty good in about 10 minutes or so in the fridge. So now we wanna add this as well as we can without getting it all over us or spilling any. Once we have it in our pan, Spread it evenly across, fill in those corners. Everything is filled in great. So now we need to put our topping on. So this is the half cup of the crumbs that we reserved for the top. And what I like to do is put them in a bowl because it's easier for me to take my fingers and kind of spread it out over the top, I feel like I get more even coverage. So I'm gonna put it in a bowl and then sprinkle it this way instead of just pouring it on to try to get as much coverage as I can. And it's okay if there's a little bit of pudding showing, no one's gonna care about that. They'll be, be able to see that it's a vanilla pudding underneath. 
This is great for church gatherings. It's great for family gatherings. It's good to have in the house so you get two or three nights of dessert. That's what we did with it last time I made it. Now, once we have this all done, we need to let that pudding and that cream cheese firm back up so we can get some kind of scoop out of it. It's a dessert. It's not really gonna scoop out in perfect squares, but it's definitely gonna be more solidified than what it is right now. So we wanna pop it in the fridge for about an hour or so, longer if you can leave it, and then we'll cut up a piece and give it a taste. Okay guys, here's our dessert. I don't have a very big piece because we're coming up on dinner time here. So I'm gonna have a bigger piece for dessert later on. But this is our gluten-free Oreo pudding dessert, or as we like to call it in this house, heavenly Oreo dessert. So I cut out a little piece. If you look in the video over here, you can see I actually get a pretty clean cut out of the bottom. Not, not a whole lot of crust down there that I missed. So let's hope that the rest of the dessert comes out as good as that piece did. Let's give it a try. So we've got that Oreo cookie crust that is firm back up. It's got that Oreo cookie crunch again because we put butter in it and popped it in the fridge. The pudding is creamy. The cream cheese helps with that. It's firmed up some. It's got that Cool Whip in there to lighten everything up. And then of course, we have all those crumbs at the top that just tell us that there's Oreos throughout. I think this is something that you could take to all your friends that eat gluten and they're not gonna know the difference. Um, it's always something I try to do when I have recipes. Um, as you guys know, or some of you may know, I'm not gluten-free, my wife is, and I do all the cooking. So I'm always trying to get recipes that don't taste gluten-free or are naturally gluten-free. And this is one that I can tell you my friends aren't gonna know the difference. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. I hope you give it a try. I'd love to hear from you. Please leave comments below. Think about subscribing and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks guys.